Hey friends, Richard at the Jam Space here. I just wanted to do a video about the newly announced Apple M1 iPad Pro 2021. As an iPad Pro 2020 owner and user, uh, I watched the keynote at uh, Apple's Spring Loaded event and I was pretty excited about it. It is basically what I was hoping they were going to release last year. I just couldn't hold off anymore. I had to get something and I've been using the 2020 iPad Pro as my exclusive computing device for over a year now. So I thought I was somebody who um, had something of worth sort of to say about this new iPad Pro and I have to say it's a major upgrade. I've got six reasons why I think that it is a, you know, a significant upgrade and a device you should be interested in. So the first thing is, of course, that M1 chip. It's got the eight core CPU, which is uh, supposedly 50% faster than the A12Z from last year's iPad Pro. Um, the eight core GPU, which is got apparently 40% faster graphics than last year's A12Z chip. Second uh, major upgrade is the increased storage. So I have the one terabyte uh, version of the 2020 iPad Pro. That was the maximum storage that you could get last year. They've now doubled that to two terabytes. I think that's pretty significant if you're um, editing video, um, you're a professional photographer, you're interested in recording audio. For me, two terabytes would give me a lot of extra room to be working on multiple large projects all at the same time and keep, you know, other things like games and, you know, maybe just personal photos and things like that. Two terabytes kind of gives you a lot of room to work with. So that might be, it's pricey, but it might be worth it to, to people that are actually going to use the iPad Pro in a professional kind of a way. The next thing is the increased RAM. They weren't really too loud about this, but if you go to the website, it is actually there on the specs. Whereas in the past, it was kind of a secret. Apple wouldn't really tell us how much RAM was on an iPad or an iPad Pro. Uh, you'd basically have to do some sort of diagnostic testing. People would order the iPad and run it through uh, a program that would tell them, oh, okay, so, you know, for example, in 2018, most of all of the iPad Pros had four gigabytes of RAM, but if you had the one terabyte version, it had six gigabytes of RAM, supposedly to help with file management because it was so much more storage. But um, this time around, they are actually putting it on the website and they're letting us know that if you get the 512 gigabyte storage version or lower, you're gonna get eight gigabytes of RAM. So that's a two gigabyte increase from all of last year's models. But what's exciting for me is the one and two terabyte storage versions of this new iPad Pro. Um, they're gonna come with 16 gigabytes of RAM. So <clears throat> that that is the same as what you are seeing on the M1, I, I guess, uh, what do you wanna call it? The M1 Air? and the M1 uh, MacBook Pro 13 inch. Um, yeah, it's a MacBook Pro they're calling it. The laptops and the uh, iPad now have the same chip. So, and they have the same RAM. So to me, this is kind of indicating that something's coming for the iPad Pro, but we'll just carry on with the list and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Now, the fourth major um, you know, improvement is now we have a Thunderbolt and USB-C 4 um, connectivity with the port, whereas before it was just USB-C 3, I believe. So we have now 40 gigabytes per second of bandwidth with a wired connection. That is a four times increase over the 2020 iPad Pro. So yeah, data transfer, um, the types of auxiliary um, kind of peripheral devices that you can connect now to the iPad Pro is gonna be widely increased. Um, and I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of things that are going to be kind of designed for the iPad Pro with its new Thunderbolt connectivity. Um, yeah, so we're talking about major outboard display possibilities. So I'm thinking they're gonna probably look at correcting their um, 
external monitor support as well in the future. I mean, that's a we hope so kind of a thing. Um, fifth major upgrade that makes the 2021 iPad Pro an am amazing device that you should consider is the new Liquid Retina XDR display. 1,000 nits of full screen brightness, a 1,600 nit peak brightness. So I think that the 1,000 nits is it just can sustain that at all times and then 1600 is just in a flash. I'm not 100% sure really what the difference is there. That's my best guess. Uh, but either way, it's better than my iPad Pro 2020 that maxed out at 600 nits of brightness. So for me, I like to use the iPad Pro also to play music. It's sort of like replaces my sheet music or lead sheets and charts for songs that I want to play and if I'm ever outside it you know it can be a struggle if your screen isn't bright enough to compete with the sun right so uh, this is going to be a, an improvement for outdoor usage I would think for everybody it's got uh, the XDR display has got a one to one million to one contrast ratio and it is powered by 10,000 mini LEDs so Sounds pretty cool um, for people that are going to be doing uh, video editing, picture editing, that kind of stuff. Just watching content. Um, it's it's the same technology as their XDR uh, monitor, six thousand dollar thing that I would never be able to afford. But if I can get it in an iPad Pro, that's pretty cool. Okay, and then last on the list, uh, the sixth thing that is kind of new and um, potentially a major upgrade if you're interested is the 5G cellular. So something that might not be major right now, but I think in two or three years time, if you're still rocking your 2021 iPad Pro, you're going to be kind of happy that you have a 5G chip in there and you'll be able to do those really super fast up and down. Those are the, those are the major things. Like I, I say, like I've been using an iPad Pro now for over a year. I can do all of the general computing stuff that a human needs to do in the world, you know, to get by day to day office kind of stuff, you know, going on the internet and, you know, whatever content c consumption, but also content creation. And, um, you know, that can be recording music in GarageBand, um, shooting this video or other videos that I've made for YouTube, editing them with iMovie. Pro applications, are they going to come to the iPad now? Well, I would say that pretty much most of that list, the M1 chip, the increased storage, the increased RAM, the Thunderbolt, uh, and USB-C4 connectivity, Liquid Retina display, uh, XDR display. I think all of those uh, really tell kind of a good story that it's got to be coming, right? What would be the point uh, in, in all of these features um, if we weren't going to allow professionals to use their favorite uh, programs like Logic and Final Cut? It's got the same chip as, as all of the other Apple machines now have like the iMac and uh, the MacBook Air has it. So I mean if if those programs can run on on an, on an Air with an M1, they can run on an iPad Pro with an M1. Those are my thoughts. Now, some people have speculated that perhaps Mac OS, you know, Big Sur might be coming to the iPad. I think, you know, maybe in maybe in time something like that might happen but i think the first step really is going to be to get the pro apps working and get people used to that and not not completely flip the switch and turn it into a mac uh so it, it's possible i like some people have commented that big sur while i haven't used big sur it looks like very touch friendly of course uh the iPad's the only one that has touch, but so some people have speculated that perhaps that's they're getting users ready and they're just getting um, Mac OS kind of ready for a touch future that it could have on, on iPads. Maybe, maybe, I'm not sure about that, but um, what I do want is for iPad OS 15 here in a month and a half to continue to grow and become more user-friendly. I want to see 
better workflows. I don't want to feel like getting a task done is like a workaround. <laughs> you know, there should be some more direct paths to uh, achieving, you know, moving files from place to place. Yeah, file management, basically um, searching for files, um, all of that kind of just real boring computery stuff. You know, they, they could maybe stand to just improve that some more. Um, and then I guess my last kind of general thought about this 2021 iPad Pro is this ultra wide true depth camera with center stage. So when you're kind of doing your zoom meetings and, um, the problem with the iPad Pro is when you have it in the landscape mode, the camera is, is not up on the top of the iPad. It's, it's on the side. And so you kind of look like in the meeting that you're, you're kind of looking off into space and that you're not really paying attention to your coworkers or classmates or your grandma <laughs> or whoever, whoever's on the other end of that call, that FaceTime call. Um, they want to see your face directly looking at them. And because of the location of the camera on the iPad, when it's in landscape mode, you don't, you don't really look like you're engaged with the people on the other side of your conversation. So they've got this thing called center stage. Now, I think that Apple might be just kind of pulling a fast one on us here. They don't really say that it's going to correct, you know, the direction of your, your head and your face and, and make you look like you're looking at the screen, but they have the actors. They look like they're looking directly in a, into our eyes. <laughs> when they showed that at the, the spring loaded uh, event there, you know, the father and his daughter were both looking straight ahead. So I think that the camera is just going to kind of like zoom in and out and make sure that I'm in the middle of the shot as much as it can. But I think I'm still going to probably look like I'm over there. We're going to have to wait till um, people who put in their orders start getting their units or maybe some people do get some review units and we can get some, I'm sure that'll be one of the first things that uh, some of the reviewers are going to look at. But anyways, just wanted to say that it looks like an awesome device. I'm kind of on the fence. I feel like I want to get one because I am actually hitting limitations. I know a lot of people say, oh, the iPad, it's got all this potential that's untapped. And, you know, I think a lot of those people are really just surfing the net and they're just doing like, you know, pages documents and and things like that i honestly editing 4k 60 frame per second video in imovie have found that my 2020 ipad pro is lagging from time to time so i really think that that for me that increased ram is the thing that i'm super excited about of course the m1 chip as well i just want that faster processing and the other thing i never mentioned is they claim that this increased storage is going to be two times faster so all of this tells me i i can continue to shoot in 4k 60 frames per second and have multiple streams of video and do editing and not be slowed down by an hour or two hours because my iPad can't keep up. I know other people say that that they've they've never experienced this with their iPad Pros. I don't know what to tell you. Maybe maybe iMovie is just a really inefficient program, and I should look to uh, maybe upgrade and get LumaFusion. I'm not really sure. I guess I could look into that, but for right now, I'm just really excited about this new iPad Pro. Anyways, give me a like, a comment below if you're having questions about the 2020 iPad Pro. I know a lot of people might be looking to save some money and get last year's model. Not a bad idea, perhaps, depending on what you're going to use it for. So I'd be happy to answer some questions. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Let me know if you want to see more iPad Pro content. This is my first um, iPad Pro uh, content. Usually it's about like guitar uh, gear and, you know, guitar lessons and me maybe like covering songs and doing my own stuff like that. But I, I really love using the iPad Pro. And if I do get the new one, I'll probably pass my 2020 on to my girlfriend. So I'll be able to do some comparison stuff. Um, I'm still thinking about it, but just let me know what you think about the new iPad Pro and uh, let's have a little discussion. I'm Richard here at the Jam Space. We'll see you in the next one.